guys, welcome back. So, there is a new Sizzler reel for Rogue One, and in that reel, they show a very special droid, the RA-7, um, also known as the Death Star droid, which has been my favorite droid of all, from all the Star Wars movies since I was a little kid. Um, I have done a helmet of that, which I will show right here. Um, I'm working on other parts of the costume. I have arms partially done, legs partially done, feet and shorts partially done, hands partially done. Um, I just need to make a torso and that costume will be almost uh, wearable. I have to do some stuff to the helmet, but it's, it's pretty far along. And seeing that it is going to be in Rogue One made me really excited to finish it. And I think it's been one of those long-term projects that I just work on a little bit here, a little bit there, whenever I have a free moment, but it's stretched out for a long time, I'm over two years now. Um, but now, seeing that it's in this movie, I feel like I should get it done uh, quickly and try to have it finished before the premiere. I don't know if I can take it to the premiere, but I want to have it at the same time. So my goal is to get it done. So I started looking at the clip of the new RA-7 droid and I've noticed quite a bit of difference in the helmet. The overall look is really good. It looks almost the, the same at a glance, but on close inspection, I can see quite a few differences. So I figured I'd make a little video and we would take a look at the classic droid from A New Hope and um, the new droid and the new clips and see um, what's different and what's not. And uh, we'll take a look at that now. All right, guys, so this is a bit of a crude way to uh, set this up, but I have some photos in my library over here on the right, and I'll pull photos over so we can compare um, as we go through this. I have Here's our new droid. Looks beautiful and shiny, and overall looks pretty correct, but I started to notice a few things uh, as I looked at these shots here, and let's see where to start. Now, I guess the helmet is probably going to be the main thing. They did a good job. The scale is correct. It's nice and, and humongous. I think that a lot of times people see the sculpt that I did in person and they say, wow, it's so huge. And they don't realize that this is a very, very big helmet. If you look the size of the neck compared to the head, it is it is giant. Um, one of the things I noticed right away is this side detail here is quite a bit smaller than the original. Let me see if I can find a good picture here from the other side. So here here's a picture. It's kind of blurry, but you can see this detail here is quite large. I'll scale this down a little bit. Now, it does look yellow in this picture. That is just because of color correction. Um, but you see this detail goes probably two-thirds of the distance between this line and this line is the height of this detail. And then over here, it's a really small little bump, which is definitely one of the big differences I, I noticed right away. Uh, another thing that really caught my attention quickly was the angle of the mouth is slightly different. On the old one, the um, if this was if you saw this shape from the profile, it would be facing almost straight down this uh, nose piece here. So this angle and the front of this would be in the same direction. But they angled this quite a bit, which makes the lower section here quite a bit longer. And it's already long on the other um, on the old droid. But maybe you can see it here. The angle of this is tilted more down, and this one's tilted more forward. Even with the head, even at a slightly lower angle, practically, than this one, you can still see that this detail is pointed more forward. There's also something on this detail that I think they missed. Uh, it's hard to show it here on the camera, but it's hard to show it in general. It took me a long time to figure out what was going on. When I was sculpting this and trying to figure out how to make this part. There was something that didn't sit right. And basically there are a bunch of cylindrical shapes here, some discs, and the way they overlap each other is very strange. And it doesn't look like they quite captured it here. We are gonna look at the mouth for the RA-7. This is the one I, I 3D modeled um, for my sculpture. So this is actually the one that is molded in my, um, the version that I built. So when you look at this from the profile, get it in front of my uh, face here, maybe we can see it against this little line here sticks out further than um, what's above and below it. But when you turn it forward, 
the ring below it sticks out further on the sides. Now this took me a long time to get enough reference to figure out where this transition takes place and how it was actually working like that. Um, I would see profile pictures and it would look like this and then I would see front pictures and it would look like this ring was bigger. And you would imagine that they would just, you know, tear them. But it turns out that this whole piece here is offset from the piece underneath. It looks like maybe they're two separate parts. So anyway, it took me a long time to, to learn that. Uh, literally months of searching around trying to figure out what the heck was going on with that area. Now the new droid, um, that is looks different to me. It might be correct, it might be correct, but it doesn't look like it in the uh, the video. Could be wrong. Another section that is slightly strange is right above the eye here. Uh, let's keep going here. Oh, here's another picture of that detail on the side. You can see how small it is on the new droid and how big it is on this old droid. Some of the curves here also are quite a bit different. So you'll see this line right here. I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. Um, let me see if I can find a picture and click through these really quick. <clears throat> that line has changed considerably. Let me see, see if I can find... So this is from the other side, but this is a, a pretty good mirror. You see how much this curve is right here. And when you see this one, the curve is much, much uh, reduced. I'll forward to a point where he looks forward. This person walks like somebody I know. I just wonder if that's them in the suit. I'm going to have to find out. Okay, so he looks forward. There we go. Nice clear shot. Um, they tapered and cleaned up this line a lot. Right in here is very, um, very smoothed out. And the old one was... Here's a picture looking down. You can see the curve here on both sides. It comes in very far. And then this line here is almost straightforward in relation to the face. Whereas on this one, you can see the taper. It's nice and smooth. Kind of comes in like a point. And it's very, very symmetrical. I mean, the little strange differences on one side are exactly the same on the other side. Whereas this droid, the asymmetries are quite a lot. And when I was sculpting this, I had lots and lots of reference photos. I started to realize how wonky the actual helmet is and how the details don't quite match from side to side. Um, so those are like some of the main things I noticed right away on the helmet. Also, you can see these details here. There are the little holes in the top. On the new droid, there are only six. And on the old one, pop this open, there are nine. It's got three holes in the middle here. You can see those are not there. So it almost seems like it might be maybe even smaller. The old droid has very big. Um, so there's only six holes here. There's nine in the old one. This detail is different. And if you see on the new droid, it doesn't have the little hole in the center. And this one does. Now this part here is from a record player and this is thanks to uh, Chris Travis who got me a lot of info on this droid and some of the measurements for these record player parts which helped me figure out the scale uh, much more closely on my replica. Uh, let's see here, we'll go back and see if I can find a picture of that part so we can show you. Alright, here we go. So this piece here of the record player is actually what the top part of this helmet is. And this is from a, a Mitchell turntable. There's also a lot of parts on here that are used in other Star Wars uh, parts. So um, I believe this is the button on the side of R2-D2's leg. He has his two buttons on his leg. There's, uh, let's see, there's another part that is R5's antenna, which is a different part of the same record player. So there's my 3D models of those parts right here. Um, you can see this is different. So yeah, this piece angles way forward. These are smoothed out. There's the bump in the middle of the lens isn't as pronounced as on the old droid. So we can see this here. There's quite a uh, accentuated lump. Uh, another thing, we'll move on to the rest of the suit, that I noticed right away is that the shoulders are different. So the shoulder bells here have 
they look like a, a pretty smooth version of C-3PO shoulders, but the old ones just had the detail along the top. It was just a one line, and now the new one has the line, but it has this kind of a T-shape, like 3PO has. Also new, the screen used droid actually didn't have these hands or these shorts. That is something that was on the display droid, which has C-3PO's hands, C-3PO's shorts, and C-3PO's feet. But in the movie, the hands are totally different, and there are basically no shorts. It's like a fabric shorts, uh, fabric short, shorts, I don't know. Um, and the droid is sitting down, and you can clearly see that there are no shorts like this. I actually like the C-3PO shorts on this droid and the hands. I think they work well. But you can see here they went with that, same thing. But if you look in the movie, that's not how it is. Let me see if I, I don't know if I have movie shots here from the previous movie from A New Hope. Um, we have this one, the profile of the black version of this droid on the Death Star. That's me. <clears throat> now, I think, again, they did a good job here with the head of this droid. Let me see if I can back it up a few frames. Um, overall, the shape of the suit looks pretty good. I think some of the details aren't quite as deep on the torso. Like, these lines here look pretty shallow maybe an eighth of an inch um, let's see on the real one there pretty deep if you see the depth here maybe half an inch or close um, it's not a shallow part and here it is very shallow I wish I could zoom in a little more so that is a big difference I wish I could see the legs so I could know what the knees look like because the ones I'm working on are like this they're smooth uh, they don't have any teeth on the front. I'm hoping they didn't do that. I hope they kept them similar to this. And again, with the detail here on the torso is much deeper on the old droid than the new droid. But the new droid looks good. I think, if I had to guess, and I could be wrong, I would guess that this is 3D modeled and printed um, to help with the symmetry. The helmet looks almost perfect the shoulders are very very smooth and the can't say anything about the torso so far but from the little bit I can see it seems like it's more symmetrical um, but that's just my guess these are my initial thoughts on this hopefully I can see some more images of this one soon and get another update um, old droid Let's see, where's the new one again? Let's, let's, let's take a look. Let's see what they did with the belly wires here. So, belly wires are a little different. Um, I honestly am not even sure that these belly wires on this old version are ac accurate to what was on screen. I think that these belly wires might actually be the belly wires for the silver C-3PO from um, Empire Strikes Back that they used on this display. However, I could be mistaken. Um... They got the bolts right. The arm bolts here on this droid are the same as the side bolts on C-3PO, which they got correct on this droid. So anyway, just a few things to look at. I think I'm gonna keep my old version of the helmet. I am just gonna keep it classic. But with the body, I'm deciding how I'm gonna model this. I think I'm gonna do it in 3D and print it and see how that goes, just because it's not hard to do. Um, It'll be consistent. If I need to change anything, it, I can uh, adjust it slightly, reprint parts. And that should be good. And pretty soon I should have torso, arms, head. Um, it's some kind of showable version. Uh, I'm going to Europe in a few days. And when I get back, I am going to be focusing on this guy quite a bit. So anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry if it was a long ramble, but this guy's. Uh, means a lot to me ever since I was a kid. So, alright, back soon guys.